your staff as recently as yesterday said that uh, Senator Allen's remark on the campaign trail in 2006 where he called an opponent's tracker of Makaka was fair game in this race. You told me in, in, in an interview on NBC 12 that we're both going to be judged on what we've done and that is fair. Senator Allen has repeatedly apologized for that incident, did so in his recent book, and has done so many times in interviews. Would you say that it's time to move past this event, or do you think we should continue to bring it up throughout this campaign now, six years later? Well, Ryan, I haven't been talking about it on the campaign, but look, we ought to be held accountable Your campaign for, said yesterday it was fair game. What we ought to be talking about is we are accountable, of course, for what we've done in public life, what we've said, what we've done. Now, George and I both encourage you to realize we're humans. Uh, neither of us are perfect. We make mistakes. We're no better, no worse than anybody here. So in terms of the way we get judged for mistakes we make, I mean, I think we have a right to ask for a little bit of, you know, patience because we're mortals. Um, but, uh, but I have followed, uh, obviously, what George said, and especially maybe what he said as he's apologized for it, um, what he said in his book. And he apologized to the young man, and I give him credit for that. And he said he was wrong, and I give him credit for that. But as I read the apology, the apology was, of course, if I knew that the words were offensive, I wouldn't have said them. When he singled out a, a young man in this crowd and looked at him and said, welcome to America, welcome to the real Virginia, there was no mistake about what those words meant. There was no mistake. The implication was that this young student was was somehow less of a Virginian or less of an American than George or than you and me. And I don't know why he would say that, but for whatever reason he said it, it's, it's part of the divisive politics that we got to put behind in this country. And it wasn't a unique incident, you know, from looking at Democrats and saying the job of our party is to knock their soft teeth down their whiny throats from calling legislators dinosaurs or monarchical elitists, which he did, from referring to federal employees, as he did earlier, as sanctimonious social engineers. There's a name-calling and division and bullying aspect of this, which is in very long supply right now in Washington. It's not who Virginia is. And I don't know that there's anybody in this room who thinks that the way to fix the dysfunction in Congress is to put more people in who want to do name-calling who want to divide people against one another. I'm thrilled that in this new Virginia, we're all real Virginians. That talent society is what's rocketed us forward. And I think we may have a different view about that. Do you want to pose the question to me? I mean, my view of that was it was a mistake. I never should have singled out that young man. He was simply doing his job. And I apologize for it. It was a mistake. And it diverted our campaign away from the issues that families care about. In this campaign, we're going to be focused on issues that I hear from families, from small business owners throughout Virginia. And they are concerned about the future of our country. I do want to unite people, all people. And I'm one who comes from a football family where you grow up where you have a level playing field. And regardless of one's race, their ethnicity, their religion, everyone ought to have that equal opportunity to compete and succeed. And yeah, I am competitive. And I do care about the people of Virginia. And when I see people in Washington hurting families, hurting a, a woman, Mrs. Wright, who runs a, 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 a restaurant right by Winchester, and she said, when these gas prices shoot up, sales drop, and we end up with empty chairs, and you see folks in Washington saying, oh, gosh, we, ought to, we, don't, we don't have to worry about high gasoline prices. You see what happens to her? Her husband was a 20 year, 21 years in the, in the Army, and she's been running that restaurant for five years or a, guy, a gentleman who has a hotel in Clarksville, where I came down this last summer and said, gosh, business has to be way up along the lake there because they caught that 150-pound uh, catfish. And I figured that would bring a lot of fishermen in. He said, gosh, sales are down 50 percent. I said, how come? And he said, because it costs $100 to fill up the pickup truck even before you put the boat in the water. And so that was hurting sales, not just for him, but for businesses. And so when I look at our energy policies, I think it is really harmful and hurtful to the people of Virginia when people in Washington say, no, we can't get after our energy resources. And Tim Kaine being in favor of cap and trade energy taxes is a direct attack on coals from our coal fields to the railroads to our ports.